It's news that keeps you informed from health to education to sport. Hello, I'm Davia Chambers and you are watching Let's Talk Tobago. This week we're taking you to the east of the island, to the place the plants in your home or garden probably came from, the Louisdor Nurseries. As usual, it's been a pretty busy week for us. Here's what we have in store for you in the next half hour. THA partners with the United Nations Development Programme. People with Down syndrome speak up for inclusion and later Tobago celebrates World Social Work Day. These stories and more when Let's Talk Tobago continues. We'll be right back. And it is said, it's the land of tomorrow. Princess Margaret say, come to Vigo for holiday. Now the whole world say, come to Vigo for holiday. Now, for those of you who have not been to Louisdor Nurseries, this episode is definitely for you. Did you know that the Louisdor Nurseries was formerly known as the Cocoa Board? That's because the nursery was one of the homes for cocoa production in Tobago. To our top story now, it was American author Helen Keller who said, alone we can do so little, together we can do so much. It's a saying that needs no explanation. In this report, you'll see that statement coming to life as the partnership between the Tobago House of Assembly and the United Nations Development Programme gets a boost. Keyshawn Wilson tells us the plans of the UNDP and THA, which ultimately will benefit you, the people of Tobago. Here's more. The appointment of a United Nations focal point. The presence of a full-time liaison on the island. Procurement training. And the creation of a national sargasm response plan. These are some of the key projects carried out by the United Nations Development Programme, or UNDP, with the Tobago House of Assembly after the organizations agreed to collaborate in 2013. The goal is to create a framework for sustainable development on the island to the benefits of Tobagonians. So, once again, the UNDP met with the Assembly. The framework solidifies a partnership between the government and the UN, working together towards the achievement of the country's national development objectives in Vision 2030 and the Comprehensive Economic Development Plan here in Tobago. The United Nations is still partnering with the THA in many areas including institutional strengthening, food security, and the training of healthcare workers. UNV and UNDP um, have been in the process of submitting uh, whether the government in Tobago here is interested in having United Nations volunteer doctors, midwives. Do you have gaps in your capacity and human resources that we could help fill? Currently, the two organizations are developing a regional community poverty profile and a coastal erosion and management project. Chief Secretary Kelvin Charles says the meeting is timely. I look forward um, to the collaboration that can take place that will ensure that the deficit that we have been experiencing as a result of the reduction of inflows uh, on the basis of our chief export, we can make up those deficits by reference to our tourism um, development processes as quickly as possible. The meeting was held at the Pigeon Point Heritage Park Pavilion. I'm Keyshawn Wilson for Let's Talk Tobago. Here at the Louisdor Nurseries, the public get the opportunity to see vegetable seedlings, coffee seedlings and citrus being propagated. And the plants are sold twice a year for World Food Day and between the June-July period. And the Louisdor Nurseries is located on the Atlantic side of Tobago. But the Atlantic coast isn't just the backdrop of the nurseries. It'll also be the backdrop for runners from Trinidad, the Caribbean region and around the world who are participating in this year's international Sea to Sea Marathon. That's right, it's almost that time again. So we have some tips for all participating athletes in this next report. The Tobago International Sea to Sea Marathon is one of the most scenic events you'll ever participate in. The feature event of this IWF series is a full marathon that takes you from the oldest rainforest reserve in the Western Hemisphere at Bloody Bay through to Roxborough. Then it winds along the Windward Road through to Scarborough, 
before finishing at the Pittitrue Beach in Little Rockley Bay. If that's too daunting for you, there's the half marathon, 10K and 5K races. This year, marketing efforts for the event are going international with the help of television production company, Dream Television UK. Their specialty is in filming and producing um, things for multi-sport events, so things like triathlons, marathons and so forth. And they do very, very, very good work. And what comes with them is a lot of international distribution. So our film, the C2C Marathon, anyone who runs the C2C Marathon this year has an opportunity to see themselves on Sky Sports, BT Sports, BN Sports in Asia. And that is really important for us, marketing the race and the island in order to bring international tourists. The 5K and 10K will run off at 6.30 a.m. and 7 a.m. respectively on May 20th. This is to accommodate those who may also want to participate in the half marathon or full marathon a day later. The event has the potential to boost the island's sports tourism thrust. Sports tourism is something that I personally see can add a great deal of value to Tobago's uh, tourism offering. And just based on the response that we got last year from, from this um, C2C Marathon experience, we believe that it can only grow. So our personal um, attitude is that we need to keep improving what we offer and we'll be able to draw many, many running enthusiasts to, to Tobago and the people who support them. Last year, over 700 people from across the globe competed in the various races. Elvis Turner was one of them. He finished 8th in the 10K. This year, he's training for the half marathon. He explains why he took part in the event. Well, this was the first ever big event in Tobago in how much years now. So I said we represent Tobago and my club, Falcons. It was overwhelming and good. And I hope this day that more people come out to support and take part. There will also be a youth training camp to prepare young people for the races. The Tobago House of Assembly is one of the supporters of the C2C Marathon. This year's event is targeting close to 1,000 competitors. I'm Amadara Mills for Let's Talk Tobago. There are three units here at the nursery, ornamental plants, vegetable seedlings and the orchard and the tree crops unit. Ornamental plants are grown for decorative purposes. At the vegetable seedlings unit, you'll have a mature plant in just about three weeks. And here's something you may not know about the plants at the orchard and the tree crops unit. When they get to about 18 inches tall and the size of a pencil, they undergo a drastic change which determines the type of citrus they actually become. We switch gears to a serious matter, domestic violence. More and more, this country is opening up the discussion and action to help prevent domestic violence. Spine-chilling videos and news reports surface almost every day. The Division of Health, Wellness and Family Development is taking matters into its own hand. It facilitated a workshop to offer advice to affected persons. More details in this report. Domestic violence is a problem faced by families in countries across the world. And in Trinidad and Tobago, it's no less of a challenge. In 2015, police responded to more than 1,600 domestic violence reports, of which more than 75% were made by women. It's an issue that Tobago is tackling head on. Recently, the gender unit in the Division of Health, Wellness and Family Development hosted a forum to bring awareness to Tobagonians on the impact of domestic violence. Dr. Tiffany Hoyt, the acting county medical officer of health in the Tobago Regional Health Authority, is advising victims of domestic violence that their situation can only change if they speak out. We hope to empower you young ladies to help stop violence against women and girls and be bold for change. Take action within your own lives to foster positive and successful outcomes. It is never too early, nor is it ever too late to be bold for change. And remember that any change you desire starts with you. Domestic violence isn't only hitting or fighting. It can also be emotional and verbal. Manager of the Women's Empowerment and Technological Center, 
Shirley McKenzie urged attendees to make wise choices while facing domestic violence situations. It's the choices that you make. It's about your choice. At the end of the day, you have the choice to say no or say. You have the choice to say, I'm not staying or I'm going. You have the choice to say, I don't like the way you treat me. I don't like the things you say to me. I don't like the, what you do to me. Women aren't the only ones hurt by domestic violence. Children and men are also affected. Violence against man, woman, or child is wrong. So we don't want that. The attendees at the forum also learn a few self-defense techniques that could save their lives in similar situation. Victims of domestic violence are reluctant to report abuse, with fewer than two people in every five domestic violence cases making a report. But the division is doing its part to create awareness on the issue and hopefully put an end to this vicious cycle. I'm Crystal George for Let's Talk Tobago. We have to take a break, but coming up, we take you to the Down Syndrome Conference as it brings a new perspective to the subject. Stay tuned. Let's Talk Tobago. We'll be right back. Welcome back. You're viewing Let's Talk Tobago. Luido is located on the windward side of the island. Many schools visit the nurseries frequently as it's included in their agriculture curriculum. As you've already seen, there's lots to learn about the topic here. And speaking of inclusion, maybe you noticed persons around Tobago wearing brightly colored socks this week. Well, it was all a part of the celebration of World Down Syndrome Day. The symbolic gesture was used to spread the word about Down Syndrome and to enable persons to speak up for their inclusion in society. We have all the details in this report. Down Syndrome occurs in about one of every 700 babies born worldwide. Tobago joined the globe in commemorating the occasion on March 21st. This year's theme is My Voice, My Community, enabling people with Down syndrome to speak up, be heard, and influence government policy and action to be fully included in the community. The Division of Health, Wellness, and Family Development in the Tobago House of Assembly, in collaborations with the United Nations, also marked the day with a conference at the Magdalena Grand Beach and Golf Resort. Dr. Agatha Carrington, the Health Secretary, said the theme is relevant to society and policies today. The theme is appropriate and timely. It's appropriate in that it addresses efforts with respect to government policy and action, and timely in that we are at that moment in time when we can no longer ignore the contribution of all differently abled persons in society. Now we have become much more embracing. Dr. Carrington says her division's mandate is to ensure people are informed and ready to play a part in assisting the differently abled. We are committed to raising awareness of the differently abled persons, in particular, as we move towards equity. And I'm saying that because when you look at the Sustainable Development Goals, one of the goals point out the need for inclusiveness and that we must have all sections of our society, all persons in our society, we should ensure that services are provided. Suji Desai, the featured speaker, is a multi-talented musician who also performed at the conference. He says despite having Down syndrome, he has reached for the stars and is achieving his dreams. You have to speak up for yourself and to be heard. Everyone in this audience should have a dream and work hard without giving up. That's what I do. With care and support, children who have Down syndrome can live a healthy, happy, and productive life. I'm Kundi Freitas for Let's Talk to Beagle. Cashew, pomerac, avocado plants and more are all available right here at the Louisdor Nursery. You can plant, nurture, water and watch your plants grow and reap the fruits of your labor. 
Now come with me as I take you on a journey. This is part of our segment called Footnotes, where we look at development through the years, the highs and lows, the milestones and memorable moments since 1980 when the new Tobago House of Assembly was formed. Let's have a look at this week's Footnotes. The face of health care in Tobago has changed significantly over the past 37 years. Tobagonians now have access to well-stocked pharmacies, well-equipped dental units and efficient emergency services. As well as the modern Scarborough General Hospital which has greater capacity for quality health care than in previous decades. Today, the healthcare system boasts a wider range of treatments for non-communicable diseases such as cancer, diabetes and heart conditions. In 2015, the Tobago House of Assembly secured a Medical Resonance Imaging Catheterization Lab or MRI CAT lab at the Scarborough General Hospital. This reduced the need for patients to travel to Trinidad to be diagnosed. So far, the feedback has been favorable because the turnaround time and the reporting time. Previously, one will have to wait at least two months to get your report back in Trinidad or two months to actually get access to the MRI machines in Trinidad. Now you're able to get access to the MRI machine within one week and you're able to get your report within the same week. Greater focus has also been placed on family care and personal wellness. In fact, the health division is now the division of health, wellness and family development as a symbol of its renewed focus on both quality health care and encouraging Tobagonians to live healthy lifestyles. Education campaigns are frequently carried out to boost public awareness about the impact of lifestyle diseases. These include symposiums as well as free screenings. Last year, the Division of Health, Wellness and Family Development hosted a public health symposium on the H1N1 and Zika viruses. You, you always benefit from awareness because you can never do any intervention or make any intervention unless you're aware. So the first part is always education. Once we're educated, then we could better um, tackle an issue. Healthcare has also been boosted by improving standards, infrastructure and the capacity of the health sector as well as human capital development. The Tobago Regional Health Authority TRJ, is also seeking to gain accreditation for the Scarborough General Hospital. This will allow the hospital to attain international standards. This will bring two benefits, ensuring quality healthcare and offering opportunities for medical tourism. We've been working quite feverishly at preventing a recurrence of some of these things. Again, education of our staff. Um, we have done some restructuring in some of the departments which would assist in some of the relationships, professional relationships and the transference of information from some of the more experienced practitioners to some of those who have not been as exposed. The emergency services have also been boosted. Ten new ambulances were provided last year to service the island. There are also more medical bases in strategic locations, including Plymouth and Roxborough, to ensure quicker responses and save more lives. In addition to the Scarborough General Hospital, there are many health centers across the island, including at Speyside, Lescoteau and Canaan, and the plans are in place to add another for the people of scenic Moriah. Last year, the TRH launched a new adolescent center that will ensure young people who need it are able to access mental health care in a safe and comfortable environment. Tobago's health sector has come a long way and offers an unprecedented range of services for the island, but the work does not stop there. The Division of Health, Wellness and Family Development is keen on fostering an integrated approach to health and wellness. The division plans to set up a research unit which will in future inform the island's strategy for healthcare. I'm Kuhn De Freitas for Let's Talk Tobago. Tobago celebrates World Social Work Day. Coming up next on Let's Talk Tobago. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back.
Welcome back to Let's Talk Tobago. We are exploring Louisville Nurseries. If you visit, you can get tips on proper growing practices and planting techniques such as grafting and budding. Now, social workers play a very critical role in society. They help individuals and families cope with situations and issues. And because it's a challenging yet rewarding career, social workers in Tobago gathered to celebrate World Social Work Day under the theme Promoting Community and Environmental Sustainability. Karen Freitas fills us in on the details. Social workers play an invaluable role in supporting vulnerable individuals and families and in helping communities to develop. That's why World Social Work Day is dedicated to recognizing their hard work. It creates an opportunity for social workers to build awareness in the community and express international solidarity. This year's theme is promoting community and environmental sustainability. We are multidisciplinary and we are multifaceted. We work within all spheres. You know, I always like to make, when I teach, I always tell my students in the very first year class, you have entered into a program of social work. Social work is the only profession that can sit in every other profession. Social workers impact many areas of society, including parenting and youth development. They achieve this by being creative with their community activities. We are here to bring people together, to inspire them, to inspire the change necessary to build a functional and sustainable future for generations to come. The work starts now. We must stand up and take our space in every aspect of development, from the social to the economic and, the, and yes, the environmental. You may ask how or even why, but we must, be, we must be creative. Inspire our youth to start community garden, involve the schools in, clean, in continuous cleanup activities, Engaging their communities helps social workers better understand the people they assist. It also makes them more effective at their jobs. You see, if we don't go in the community, we wouldn't understand that. We wouldn't understand that the child didn't go to school, not because she's lazy and she's good for nothing, but they don't have money and they don't have food to send the child to the free education that we said free. But if you're not in the community, you wouldn't know that. World Social Work Day is commemorated on March 21st each year. I'm Kuhn De Freitas for Let's Talk Tobago. Grafting and budding are done right here at the Louisville Nurseries. Now, this is a long and complicated process, but what I can tell you now is the process involves a bud from the parents or mature plants. Poetry is the art of transforming ideas and feelings into words. And when you hear about poetry nowadays, you usually see more young people performing. But in this report, you'll realize that poetry is also for the young at heart. Omadara Mills tells us more. I got an old bicycle wheel and a piece of stick. Then I pull some vine from off a tree to turn while others skip. Diabetes in children was not heard of because they used to run and play. But now it's only fingers as they sit most of the day. An excerpt from Then and Now, one of the poems presented by the Golden Members Club. They marked World Poetry Day with their first ever Poetry in Motion event. The initiative has also encouraged other poets to showcase their talent. One of the intent of the group is to produce a book eventually. So I have been steering them in the direction of writing in the theme of then and now and of long ago so that the general public, especially the younger folks, can have an idea about carnival of long ago, fashion of long ago, medicine, etc so they're going to be more like nostalgic pieces. We also have been invited other poets who have been sort of in the closet, giving them a chance to come out and showcase their pieces and to get accustomed to the stage and so on. The group was started in April 2016 by seniors who previously participated in various courses held by the Scarborough Library facility. The monthly meetings give them the opportunity to socialize with their peers. It makes them feel wanted and it gives them a reason to keep pressing on. Because sometimes when one retires, you tend to feel as, okay, well, there's no use for me anymore, life is over, let me just stay home and pine away. These um, clubs give them a chance to feel like they are still wanted and being active is very good for their health as well too. 
and it gives them a second chance at life. So life is now beginning in a new way. Poetry helps people explore the world around them. It enhances their creativity and allows them to simplify complex issues such as death, love, and life. Miss Whiteman says that she's noticed a difference in those who are part of the Poetry Club. I've seen so many changes with the seniors. They have this sort of happy-go-lucky and a feeling of accomplishment, having for the first time for most of them actually producing poetry, writing poems, and expressing their feelings about World Poetry Day is celebrated by the United Nations UNESCO on March 21st. It seeks to sustain the oral tradition of poetry recitals, promote the teaching of poetry, and restore the relationship between poetry and the other arts such as theatre, dance, music, and painting. The seniors hope that Poetry in Motion has helped to enhance the public's appreciation for the art form. I'm Amadara Mills for Let's Talk Tobago. And it's time to have your say, the segment of our program where we hear what you, the viewers, have to say. Today we're asking, is removing soft drinks from schools a good idea? Why? While you think about it, we'll have a look at who had their say this week. It's an excellent idea and it's way overdue, it should have been on the drawing board a long time ago. Soft drinks basically has what do you call sugar in it. Sugar as you know leads to diabetes in a, in, a, in a significant way. So the initiative that the Ministry of Health is taking on now to reduce soft drink consumption by students in schools is a very good initiative. Well if the alternative is just as affordable then fine. Fresh juices, you know, Tobago, we have a lot of fresh fruit, we have a lot of you know, lime juice, we have a lot of grapefruit juice, orange juice. When we look at the high sugar content and the glucose level, I think it's not really healthy for children. And if you're thinking about developing their mind, I would think that not having soft drinks in school is a good approach, it's a good start. Awareness is really very important because even though they ban the soft drink, that didn't really solve the problem as to see you know, because they could get soft drinks any, any other time. Removing it, I think that will be something that is very beneficial in the long run. We would like to take a very proactive approach in dealing with these diabetes issues, the CDAP um, issue as well, and in cutting the sugar from at an at a early age, or at least reducing it to a controlled amount, um, these young individuals will actually grow up with a sense of responsibility um, in terms of sugar control. We close another edition of Let's Talk Tobago and as always, we thank you for watching. Please email us with your comments or queries about the program and be sure to visit our website, like us on Facebook and subscribe to our YouTube channel. From our house to yours, I'm Davia Chambers along with the Department of Information, Office of the Chief Secretary, Tobago House of Assembly, wishing you a safe and very productive week. We close now with a montage of the Primary Schools Championships 2017. <laughs>